orientation videos that are associated with Unit 4 from working with health IT systems. The last thing I'd like to demonstrate that's associated with the orientation videos for Unit 4 of Component 7, working with HIT systems, is how a well-designed CPRS can actually support best practices in both the assessment and the documentation. It also helps to facilitate or enhance the continuity of care when the system actually provides automated planning of next steps, the ordering of consults and lab tests, and things that are required as part of the best practices for this particular patient, with a minimum cognitive load upon the user. What we're going to do here is actually resolve a reminder, and I just want you to notice here I still have patient 1, and we're still in the same chart, of course. And you'll see that he has several clinical reminders here. I also want to note for you right now that there should be another clinical reminder here called depression screening. There is actually some additional functionality embedded within the depression screening that I'd like you to see. This chart is not open to a date that's associated with a clinical point in it, so I need to do that first. So I am going to create a new note, and I'm going to associate it with the visit. And within that note, I'm going to resolve a reminder. We can see the encounter locations. General Medicine, August the 12th. Clicking the OK button, and of course, just like before, here it is up here. It's now General Medicine, August 12th. I'm going to associate a new note with August the 12th, and you can see that he is a long timer here, so he has quite a few notes. I'm going to create a new note, just like we did in Unit 2, and I'm going to choose just an assessment. And of course, we have that issue again, that the date does not default to the date that I set, August the 12th. So I go to the calendaring function, change that date, and then what I have in here is a new note in progress, just like before. With this new note, I'd like to resolve a reminder. I take you down here to the bottom. Think of these as drawers, you know, like a file cabinet. There's the template drawer, a reminder drawer, and an encounter drawer. I'm going to open the reminder drawer. Now, this is where I'm going to ask you to use your imagination. If you recall, on the cover sheet, these are the reminders that we have due for Mr. One. You'll also see that up here in the upper right-hand corner, there's that alarm clock again that's telling me that my patient really needs some additional testing done. And if you remember way back, several units ago, we said that clinicians don't like to open that up and see that little red alarm clock in there. It's a reminder to them that something is missing. He has these four things due, but recall, what I wanted to demonstrate for you was depression screening. Using your imagination, let's pretend that depression screening is showing up here in the due. That means that it would also be reflected on the cover. So I'm going to click on depression screening, and very similar to one of the prior units, it brings up a template of sorts that is going to allow you to complete the depression screening. It is a reminder resolution. If you do this properly and you take care of it, then it would come off of the cover sheet. But the goal, of course, is not to have a red alarm clock up in your patient's window. So I'm going to perform the PHQ-2. I also want to let you know that you're going to hit an error message that looks like this. Just ignore it. It just means that there's a new DLL file that needs to come up, and it is not in this version. What I'd like to do is just show you that this is a two-step process. I am going to make this patient depressed. I'm going to say nearly every day, nearly every day. And then, what it does is, it scores it and puts a message down in here. The screen was performed, the score was a 6, which is a positive screen for depression. So then, you look up here, and it says patients with a positive score for depression have additional evaluation required, including evaluation of risk of suicide. This is guiding the clinician for best practices. It's not enough to just say the patient is depressed, but you also have to do a deeper evaluation. So then you would jump into the PHQ-9. If this patient only had a score of 2, you would not have had to do the PHQ-9. Let's go ahead and click that. You're going to get the error message. Ignore it. So let's go through, and again, I'm not really concerned, other than the first PHQ, number 2, that I want you to score as severely depressed. This one I really don't care. You can just click whatever you want.
Let's fill this out and say OK. What this has done now is it has also taken this, the results of that study, and put it into the note field. So there is all of the data there. What I also want to show you is that if you click on these hypertext links, what it is doing, if you click here, it will actually take you out to the VA Department of Defense Evidence-Based Guidelines site, which allows the clinician to see where the evidence for doing this particular assessment and ordering these types of tests comes from. This is a really great way to support either learning for the novice clinical student, like maybe a nursing student or a doctor or something of that nature, or also just to let you look up the evidence that causes the stimulation or causes the guidelines to come up. It's a very nice way to actually incorporate evidence-based practice right into the practice component. I'm going to close back down that PDF file that's on the web. Of course, if you don't have a link to the Internet, these are not going to work. It's also the same. You can get the PHQ-9 questionnaire on paper if you'd like but I wanted to demonstrate that function to you. I'm going to click Next, and what it's doing now, it's saying, oh, there's also a foot exam that's required for this particular patient. So what are you going to do? What I'm going to choose is to show you some more functionality for workflow support. I'm going to say, well, I'm going to refer the patient to podiatry. I'm not a podiatrist, so I need to refer him to take care of this reminder. I'm going to click it and going to say Next. 